okay uh, so this is the agenda let's start uh, so we'll start with the introduction which we just did uh, we'll discuss what is process mining uh, we'll see what are the advantages of process mining the process areas uh, we'll have a quick demo as well uh, we'll go into the process mining and see the different kind of options over there and obviously we'll have the question at, uh, at the end uh, but at in between if you have any questions you can see to stop me in case there is something uh, which just needed. one thing Vishal, I'm sorry for interrupting. Uh, yeah. Can you uh, exit the recording screen because half of the screen, yeah, it's not for Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. One second. Thanks for pointing it out. Yeah, and is it, uh, is it visible now? Properly? No, uh, so just go to the presentation mode now. If you could go yeah, to the presentation okay. mode. Yep. Uh, yeah. Actually, At this the... panel is on the top. One second. Uh, this, yeah, now it should be okay. And I yeah. should bring this down. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this, this is okay? all. Yeah, 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 that's all. Okay, perfect. So let's start. Uh, we just had the introduction, so we'll skip this. Okay, so let's, uh, before we even go into process mining, we need to understand uh, why process, understanding the process is very important. So all of us being, uh, I don't know the audience, like uh, some of may be more into business, some may be more into technical. But if you are in the technical line, uh, more or less you would have heard that you need to understand the process or the business process. Why is the understanding of the business process very important? Because most of the decisions happen based on the business process. Even before we think of a technical solution, uh, understanding the process is the first step uh, for any automation or for, for any thing that you need to take forward. And uh, this is some of the statistics, 37% of the decision makers report delays to transformation due to misunderstood processes. So basically understanding the process is very important. Uh, unless you understand the process, you cannot take the next step. And if you don't understand the process, there's no way you can do an improvement. So that's why process understanding is very important. Lack of what, what happens if you don't understand the process? So if you don't understand the process, you have low process transparency, meaning like you don't understand the process, so you don't know the nitty gritties of the process. You have slow and inefficient processes that uh, you you are not uh, understanding the process fully. So you have a high level view of the process. You know that this process works in such manner, but you don't know the actual detail of the process. And then you may base your uh, decisions on some assumptions or some uh, kind of uh, data which you have, which is not the real data right so you might have an inefficient process which is there and uh, the third point meaning like when you are doing automation you have normally when you do an automation you might be talking to one department or one uh, group of people but how it is uh, impacting the entire process that is very important so one classic example is suppose in a company uh, the purchase to pay so we'll also talk about that process but in general suppose in a company, you uh, the company needs to procure laptops, right, or any other goods. So how does it happen? So first, there is a requisition, a requisition from the respective department. So IT department will say that, hey, we need uh, so and so laptops, uh, hundred laptop laptops to be procured, right? Then it will go to the finance team. The finance team will uh, look for the vendors. They'll say so purchase purchase requisition will go into the process of purchase uh, purchase request. So first will be the purchase requisition, then you will have a purchase request. So in, the, in terms of purchase request, what will happen is the finance department will work with different vendors. They might have, a, you might have a fixed set of vendor, right? Suppose you are having Dell or uh, other company laptop, which you are already having a fixed laptop uh, vendor whom, from with whom you are kind of uh, negotiating, or you might have other vendors. So basically that purchase request will convert to purchase requisition where you will uh, work with different vendors to get a best rate for your company. Once that is gone or uh, done, the vendor selection is done, then it will ideally go to the finance team. Basically, the finance team will approve that, okay, this this uh, requisition is good to go and uh, we are uh, fine with this requisition, this purchase order. So that purchase order will go to the vendor. Once that purchase order will go to the vendor, then uh, the vendor will deliver the goods and then the invoice will be raised and the invoice will be uh, uh, paid by the company. So as you can see, uh, there are different teams involved in, in a company, right? It's not a single team or a single individual who is working on any one process. And what we normally happens is if we are doing automation with one department or one uh, group of people, then we might miss the entire end-to-end -end life cycle. So in this example, which I said, 
if you are only working with suppose requisition department like say it department you will only be uh, doing the automation for how to procure your goods but at the same time you need to work with different teams like your uh, vendor team your uh, finance team and your management and different different teams are involved in the entire process so uh, if you are working with one department you might miss the whole picture so that's why understanding the entire picture is very important so if you are working in silos or if your automation is only working with one department then it is uh, then you are not getting the whole picture and you are not uh, reaping the benefit of the automation in that case so that's why the entire process is very important you need to understand the whole process so that you can know okay this is my bottleneck this is where i can uh, do optimization automation and so on and uh, the last point difficulty justifying automation and process investment so again here if you are same point if you are working with one department or one uh, group of individuals uh, you might not get the whole picture so it will be difficult justifying why you need to automate that particular process in that particular department but if you show that in the overall uh, theme of things for the entire business process then it properly justifies and you have the data which kind of uh, backs you up for that so the purpose of this slide is to say why the process is important and what do we miss if we don't understand the entire process right so that's why it is the challenges and the impact of this uh, this uh, steps so um, are there any questions here or uh, before i move ahead i think uh, all of us do understand this right why the understanding the entire process is important okay i'll take that as yes okay so so now comes uh, so this is the background of why process mining or process understanding is important and now we'll come to what process mining helps us do so process mining helps us discover understand optimize and monitor your process so i took an example of this uh, purchase to pay right uh, like procuring the laptop for the company and so on so as we understood there are different departments involved so how do we understand what departments are involved how much time is being spent in each department how much orders are going to uh, for the entire life cycle how many items are going to and so on so there are we have information in different silos or different departments how do we collate and get that information and understand the overall picture okay so that is where to understand the overall picture of the entire data which is flowing through right from the requisition to the payment that entire data can be uh, useful through uh, that the entire data can be understood through process mining so that is where process mining will come into picture so process mining uses transactional data so what does process mining actually do it uses transactional data in system to reveal your true process so as i said uh, in the let let me again explain it with that same example if you have an example of say uh, purchase to uh, procure to pay right so that's a, a business life cycle there is uh, you know, there are different different uh, business life cycle or business processes which all the companies follow right so irrespective of your department or irrespective of your technology you still have a the uh, procure to pay process is very common so i took an example of an it company where they want to procure an uh, laptop but similar process can be in a manufacturing company they might be procuring some raw material similar example may be in hospital industry right they may be procuring the medical equipment and so on so it's not it's a very generic process uh, the uh, uh, procure to pay but that is applicable to all the industries as well so if you need to understand the data for each of the industry the generic procure to pay process is same but if you want to understand how the data is moving how i need to understand the process that's where the process mining will help so it helps organizations understand their data or their process they can understand what my data is how my data is moving which departments are involved what are the variants in my data and they can understand the overall picture so it's not particular to one particular industry or one particular department it is a generic uh, process so again here uh, we'll come to the details like process mining gives you does give you some templates but it is not uh, restricted to a particular template which you need to use you as long as you have data to feed in uh, everything is data driven basically so when you have the data available then you feed the data or you get the data in, into this uh, system and then it gives you the visual representation of the data so that you understand the data better so as you say right pictures speaks a thousand words so if you just have the data in an excel or a database it's very difficult to understand what the data is so we have a different data mining tools and tools available in the market right whereas in case of process mining what happens is you have the entire dashboard available to you you have different 
systems or variations which you can see for the data you can understand if i under, if i see that suppose in my uh, process i understand for my procure to pray process i am my finance department is supposed taking 10 days for approval whereas the other departments are not taking that much time so i will immediately find it uh, difference right and then i can dig deeper in that process and understand that okay what is the bottleneck what who is the approver who is taking time and so, so on so i will understand my process better so once i understand my process better then i can concentrate on automation that automating that so this is one step above so even before automation we first need to know what are the candidates for automation so many times when we go for automation right uh, the uh, in a if you go to a brand new company they might not even know that uh, uh, what are my uh, what are my processes that i can automate right you might suggest uh, you can automate your uh, hr enrollment process or you can automate your finance processes and so on but is that really their bottleneck is that they really their issue in order to understand their issue or understand their processes better process mining can help so you can use process mining to understand their processes then you understand where there are bottlenecks or where there are opportunities for improvement then suggest then use uh, something known as task mining so we'll talk about that uh, task mining is another uh, process wherein you install agents within their uh, in within your uh, uh, users uh, uh, laptops and then you understand more from the department perspective so, so as i was saying example of the finance department so finance department if it is taking time you might have a task mining agent sitting on the finance uh, laptop finance person's laptop and then you understand what are the steps that the finance user is taking and then you might based on that steps it will take some screenshots and based on that you can understand okay this this maybe is a manual step and that is a candidate for automation so process mining is a step above after process mining you uh, understand the overall picture based on the overall picture you can dig deeper further and understand that these are the candidates for automation and you understand your overall process as well so th that is the kind of overall view of the process mining so i'll take a pause here because this is an important uh, step any any questions on this uh, is it clear any questions from anyone to this point okay if sure. we want uh, we shall to go a bit slower anything that anyone is causing yes yeah. yeah you can please do let us know <laughs> yeah sure but otherwise yeah, i'll assume shall... that everybody is understanding <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay so okay uh, so we'll uh, we'll uh, dig deeper so they'll in case there are any questions you can stop me again so basically uh, the benefit mentioned here is uh, scalable data collection you can uh, you collect data from your existing system so again uh, collecting data is not restricted uh, to a particular format right you might have data as a kind of an event log you might have data sitting in your database you might have data sitting in your erp system say sap oracle and so on so it is quite quite flexible you can have connectors to your existing system suppose i might have a connector to my sap system i might have a connector to my erp system get information from that i might have data exported in terms of a csv or in terms of an excel file right and then i feed in that data that is possible then i can have uh, maybe direct connection to the database i can use that so there are different means of collecting the data from different different sources so it is not fixed that you need to have data in a particular format you might have data in multiple formats as long as it is uh, adhering to the minimum schema or minimum uh, data structure that is needed then it should be it can be fed into the process mining so again here uh, does when i say that it has to be uh, in the proper structure uh, there is again an option of mapping so suppose i say uh, like the classic example which we say right the invoice number somebody might be calling invoice number as invoice number somebody may be calling it as inb number and so on right so that kind of mapping needs to be done so that uh, so the invoice number is an example from the data collection point of view but in 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 general the data has to be in a particular format what format it needs to be there that is also available in the process mining as long as you can do that mapping of the data it it is it can be fed into the process mining then obviously you can get process improvement so we'll see how how this process improvement can actually be done uh, with the in action you can uh, have human you can keep uh, your human and automation working uh, properly i mean they can work in cohesion and you can have a central governance this is important you can have a central place you can where you can monitor your entire process end to end so that is also very important point so let's go to the next one. 
so uh, again here there's an example to understand uh, understand more about process mining so suppose uh, so i was taking an example of crypto to pay another example which is common again not specific to a specific industry but uh, account account payable process what is an account payable process account payable process is nothing but uh, when you receive an invoice you meaning the company receives an invoice for any goods that are delivered right yeah uh, suppose the example which i was taking the procurement of the laptop so once the laptops have been uh, delivered uh, the vendor will give an invoice or bill right then the company will process the invoice they will do a check and they will approve the invoice and pay the invoice this is the generic process so it just an example i took of the laptop this can be a, a same process for across the industries right you receive the invoice you process the invoice you validate okay the invoice is actually the uh, goods that we have ordered right it's not something which it's just like if you go to a restaurant yeah uh, if you have a big bill you might want to check that hey i did order this food items right before i pay the bill so similarly you will process the invoice or do a final check before you approve and pay so this is a high level so this at a high level anyone will understand this is my cycle but what actually will happen is if you feed this data into the process mining wherein you will feed this information in to process mining you will find the variants or the deltas which you will see so what actually would would be happening you might be receiving invoice will it always be processed no you might have a credit or missing you might have something missing in the invoice and it needs to go back and forth and then you would get a processing like suppose in process mining you 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 before even you do a final check you might have to uh, you might have a, again a credit or missing or you might credit or meaning whom it needs to be paid and so on so if that is missing you might have a back and forth there if there is something if if a company has a process that suppose anything more more than 100 dollars needs to do uh, needs to go through an approval process less than 100 dollars say 10 dollar amount does not need to go through so then it might they directly be auto approved right so in that case there this final check step might be missed <clears throat> or maybe skip so in that case the variation may be something like this and then you pay the invoice and so on so in any process it's not a, always a streamlined process right there is always some variations or some deltas differences so when how process mining will help you is determine that these are the deltas within your process or these are the variant within your process so now what will happen is this entire thing which we are seeing here right that will be shown as a graph or a visual representation and it will also tell you different different uh, ways of seeing or understanding this data so i might have suppose 1000 invoices processing in a month right i will understand okay how many invoices have i credit or missing so once i have suppose that 1000 invoices i understand hey my 600 invoices have credit or missing so then that's a big number right uh, it's not going through the straight forward way so there's a there's a bottleneck because then it is going through a back and forth so i i need to determine that why this is happening so if i need to understand that i i need to have i need to have the data i actually did have my data but there was no visual representation of where exactly my bottleneck was there so now in process mining i have that visual representation with me i can understand my data very easily because it is available to me as part of a process graph i can drill down further so suppose i say credit or missing right then i can drill down further that is it from a particular vendor where it is always missing or like suppose i have five vendors to which i am working with right is it like only two of the vendors are always missing this and so on so if i need to understand that data as a normal uh, scenario right how will i understand i'll need to dig through queries you will have to write some custom queries understand that maybe have it in excel sheet do some formatting and create some charts and so on here only requirement is you need the data and once that data is in a particular format everything is available to you in process mining you can easily dig through the data you can do a root cause analysis you can uh, understand where exactly are the bottlenecks and then automatically push that uh finding into automation hub so we'll talk about automation hub as well and then uh push it as a candidate for automation so here that's how this process mining helps it helps you understand the process more efficiently understand where exactly you are missing in the entire process and understand where exactly there are opportunities for improvement as such okay so we'll not go through much in this we are, it might be more but in general uh you can understand your process steps you can understand uh, different different uh, uh, things like you can understand your throughput time means end to end how much time it is taking you can understand your automation opportunities your uh, understand you can 
you can understand your interactions or which are the high volume cases heavy workloads and so on you can understand more of your data you can understand also the compliance perspective right so suppose if you are from the compliance perspective you need um, a process to be followed right and then you need an approval step to be followed but suppose the approval step is not being followed so then you are not following the process right so that's a compliance issue so that's something known as maverick buying in the uh, procure to so that also you can understand you can understand uh, the volume data you can understand from the cost perspective you can understand different different attributes specific to your data so it's not only you understand the flow you get lot of more information about your process um, right from understanding the process steps your throughput time automation opportunities and so on so there are lot many uh, opportunities or lot many data that you understand okay okay so process mining where does it fit in it is part of the discovery tool actually so process mining fits in into this uh, where so it is again a discovery tool it works in tandem with task mining communication mining and automation hub so process mining we are discussing today uh, it many times it is uh, de uh, working with task mining so what is difference between process and task mining so as i was saying process mining you understand the entire process so suppose as i was taking that example from the finance department you understand that okay my finance department is taking lot of time to uh, to uh, say approve my invoice and so on so then once you understand that finance department is a problem so then you can use task mining to understand what exactly they are doing is there any manual step being done there what is the system they are using and so on so there you might de uh, deploy a task mining uh, agent so that it will understand more of the data and you can understand where is the potential for automation so simply put process mining spans across multiple departments it is an overall process task mining will be spanning only a single department or a group of people where you will understand more of a specific process and the res result of process mining is you understand the entire process you understand the bottlenecks you understand the improvement opportunities the result of task mining you will understand where exactly the again you will understand the autom uh, automation opportunities and you will get a specific input on what the result of task mining will be a direct Uh, automation which you might be a candidate of automation task mining so this is more this will be dealing with a specific department or specific group of people whereas this is dealing with multiple systems and multiple departments so in a nutshell it's a high level difference communication mining as we know like it's uh, it's uh, understanding communications and understanding like say it may be a email communication and so on and understand the improvement opportunities and then this all feeds into automation hub automation hub is to crowdsource the ideas get ideas from different people so this can be in this this has a direct feed you can right click and feed your uh, information directly to automation hub so that it is visible to your management and then they can decide okay we want to go ahead with automation and so on so this, these are all part of the discovery products from your path uh, so process mining is part of that actually. okay so now uh, so basically we'll understand the process of uh, Uh, evolution of uh, process mining so discover understand act and monitor so what exactly is that let's uh, go directly so discover you discover how do you discover the opportunity you dis connect to the different source system and now we'll go a little bit more into deeper you you can connect with the different system so i already mentioned right you don't need to have the data in a format as such you can be in different format it might maybe your sap oracle say so Jira or any other system, uh, you might have a export of the dump of the data, or you might be having a connector into these systems and get the information from there. And you also have a inbuilt app templates which uh, UiPath keeps on adding. So uh, earlier last year there were just three templates. Now there are more templates which are getting added. So templates are ready to use process mining uh, kind of you can say templates are ready to use processes which you can plug and play. So you can uh, connect. uh the data for suppose your uh, suppose you have oracle as your erp systems right so and you want to understand your uh, procure to pay process you connect with the, your oracle system you understand the data and you can start getting the information so before you uh, so this it's basically a four step process first you discover discover meaning you discover and connect to different source system then second step is you understand the data uh, which is very important which we will see now in action like how you understand the data you will see the data which is in the process mining you we have this visual charts which are available and there are different different variations we'll go more into detail on this in the actual ui as well 
and uh, you can see uh, the impact of cost, labor, root cause analysis, and so on. So I'll not go more into detail here because I'm going to show you this as well. And then uh, what is the end result of this? After you do all of this exercise, you have to act. You understand that, okay, this is my um, candidate for automation. So then you might push it directly to automation hub. You might uh, deploy the task mining agent and you do uh, automation, you do an improvement. Basically, so it's like a continuous improvement. It's not a one-time activity. It's a, it's an, it's a circular uh, activity. So once you do an automation, then again, you push the data and understand further that, okay, did I achieve something or not? So then you do it and you monitor again if there is any improvement and then continuously improvement. So all of us keep hearing, right? Continuous improvement. So this is the same thing. So once you understand the data further, you again uh, do some automation, do process improvement, feed the data, understand again where, okay, this this issue is handled. So is there, what are the other places where there can be improvement and so on. So that's how you continuously uh, uh, do a continuous improvement in this process as such. Okay, and this one is available both on automation cloud. Earlier it was not available on automation suite. It's also available in on-premise. So the easiest one is the automation cloud because obviously it's a SaaS. You don't have to do anything. Uh, all the infrastructure is handled by UiPath. So, so we'll see the demo in this, but it is also possible uh, if you are having your uh, infrastructure in-house. So it's also available in automation. So, so any questions here before we jump to the demo? Let's uh, hold a minute, uh, yeah. Michelle, on this. Yeah. Yes. So anyone has any questions? So guys, uh, please, because we would be jumping onto the demo. If you have, please, if you will be able to correlate with. That. So my request is, if anyone has any questions, we can go ahead and ask them. To the point that Vishal has already covered up. Uh, hi, Vishal. I had a question here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, you were talking about the automation potential graph there, right? Uh, mm -hmm. In one of the slides. Mm -hmm. uh, how is that generated? Does, does the uh, process mining app do it or is it something that the analyst sits and figures out? Uh, yeah, this is, how is that? Yeah, uh, it is a feature within, yeah, so it is a feature within uh, the process mining. So we'll see that uh, basically what it does is uh, if there is a uh, uh, there is different different uh, kind of variants which are available within the we will see it in action actually so okay. it is a feature within process mining uh, wherein um, based on the data it will analyze and it will suggest to you that this is a candidate for automation basically it will know that suppose uh, there is a lot of manual uh, steps happening in the suppose the example which i took right so suppose it is taking more time for a particular step so then it will understand that this is a place where automation is possible. Uh, so suppose it's taking 10 days for the approval. That 10 days, why is it taking? Is it some step where it is stuck at a particular point in the process or it's some variant within the process where it is stuck? So then it it will know that, okay, this is, it is a candidate for automation potential. So we'll see that also in action, actually. We'll see that how it is available. All right, yeah, thank you. Okay. Any more questions? Okay, so let's uh, see this in action. And uh, obviously once we see this in action, it will be more clear. So process mining, I'm using the staging, um, but it um, basically, yeah. yeah, process mining is again, just like other UiPath products. Uh, if you have the enterprise license available for you for around 60 days. Um, so by the time I give the session, my earlier account was expired. So that's why I had to go to the staging. Uh, so basically here, uh, just like other, uh, services you would have a process mining enabled and then you come into the process mining so this is my dashboard so this is my published app uh, but when you come here you have this option to create new app so this is the template which you are talking about so you have a generic template so template uh, the generic template meaning you have one event, single event log file uh, you want to feed in that file and understand the data or you have multiple files coming in and these are the different business processes. So we were talking about this process, right? Uh, requisition to pay or purchase to pay. So purchase to pay, if you have, your purchase to pay is a generic process, but your actual ERP system might be different, right? Somebody might be using SAP, somebody might be using Oracle and so on. So depending on which system you are using, you might use that particular template to uh, understand that. So basically when I say purchase to pay with SAP, 
it will like it will know that sap will give me data in this particular format right so that's why i can use a connector to that or the data will in that format and then it will be easier to do it and there's a generic one as well so where uh, you can use uh, a generic one if it's not part of this one similarly there are different uh, other processes like order to cache then you have incident management and so on so this particular template right this ui path keeps on uh, adding as such so if you want to show it to your client normally this particular processes are very common like purchase to pay or order to cash and that's why i'm using even purchase to pay for our demo as well but there are uh, but it's not restricted to this particular template but these are very common processes which your higher ups or your management people will definitely understand or your business people will definitely understand they understand what is purchase to pay and so on we as technical people need to understand but they as a business people will definitely understand and then the order to cash your incident management account management and so on uh, so you have salesforce you have so this thing keep getting added last year there was this three four templates so now see there this keeps on getting added uh, so again this is staging so don't take my word for it there might be couple of more templates than what is there in your if you pro, uh, do the provisioning maybe there might be ed, uh, some little bit less okay so suppose if you want to see any process uh, or you want to understand this you simply use that and you can use the create app and once you do the create app you give some basic details you configure the data source review the details and you are done so i have already created one uh, purchase to pay let's see this in action so purchase to pay again i am using sample data uh, so basically if you are just starting on this uh, and you want to understand the capability this is the best way to understand how exactly it is helping me as a business right so here i am using the sample data uh, which uipath has provided so this is my dashboard or the summary uh, page where it will give me the overall picture of my uh, process so here what i am seeing here is i have a purchase order purchase to pay process i have around uh, 172k items so average throughput time as i was saying right uh, there are different different parameters so average time it is taking for my entire cycle is 21.23 days the automation rate is this much the late delivery rate is this much percentage maverick bank maverick bank is nothing but when uh, the process so let me open this yeah so suppose uh, this is again uh, i am just opening the documentation page so in general what is the uh, purchase to pay process you create a purchase requisition then purchase order then a goods delivery invoice receipt and payments and billing right and in between you have uh, approval as such but maverick bank is something where the approval step is uh not followed so you are uh, doing a deviation from the process so that that parameters also you can see from here and how much of my value is uh how much of my overall uh, dollar value is maverick buying so here i might want to go why my few of the processes are few of the invoices are not following the said process and so on and now on the left side you would see different different options here so the overall the main one or the first step which go which we will see is the end to end process so here you can see the end to end process uh, so let me zoom so here you can zoom in zoom out and uh, here you can see what are my processes or the how, what are the steps that my process is following right so suppose create purchase requisition is the process so here you will see uh, two things one is the arrow and there's a number in between here so in the overall scheme of things like around 17k invoices flow through through this in the overall scheme of things right so whatever data i fed we'll see how we can uh, do the filtration as well but in the overall data which is fed to the system this many uh, invoices are following this path so suppose 17k odd then out of that 18k paid uh, purchase requisition and then if the uh, suppose i have right around 18.49k items right so the ma major path which is getting followed that will be in dark line the the invoices which are not following this path they will be in the light uh, line or they will be in the light color so if you see this is a gray color and this is a dark color right so this way you'll know that my major major processes are following this path whereas uh, so here it's almost 17k this is a less smaller number right so so around 2.8k are following this path so after create pre requisition uh, i can say that most of my like almost 14k are following this path whereas the other uh, 2.8k are following this path so i immediately know that okay uh, this is uh, how my data is looking so i might be expecting that all of all of my processes are following this path but that's not true right i can immediately see that there is some variation here so there is a difference here i can see that uh, 
So this visually you can see from end to end process. So this is an end to end process. And let me pull this panel this way. Okay, yeah. So, and then I can go more into detail here. I can zoom in and I can understand the variant. So variant is like different uh, sub variants or sub processes which I'm following. So suppose I was uh, showing here in the, uh, this one, right? In the slide, uh, let me open that one. Small. Yeah, so in the slide, what we had seen was that this is the normal flow, but these are the variants or the different, different, uh, you can say uh, deltas or the differences which are happening in, in the process, say credit or missing or saying this. So similarly, I can see that these are my variants which are there. So I'm a variant one, variant two and so on. So I can understand more what are the variants within my process. So that I can understand from here. Then I can, uh, so it, I get a overall picture here. I can go more into detail. I can go a lot of, into lot detail. The more I go into detail, the more variants I'll see. See, it's, it's, it's so many variants. So it becomes very difficult to see also, but see it's just how, how much detail I can go actually. So it, I can go into a lot of detail and understand the variant. The more I zoom out, the more I go, go at a high level. So basically as a management, I might get an overall picture. If I want to dig deeper, I can go more into details as well. Then I can see the trend. If I go here, what is the trend? Like uh, it's going down actually. The Maybe my there's some impact on my business. Maybe there's some recession or whatever is the reason my uh, the value is going down. So again, here I'm seeing number of items. I might, I have an, uh, again, I have a variation here. I can see based on the average item value. So I was, in the beginning, I was seeing the number of items, right? I can see based on the item value. I can see based on total item value and so on. So I can do that changes as well. I can see that. Um, I can see the distribution here. There's a graph here as such, okay? Then I can do event analysis here. So. Event analysis, like there are different, different steps which are going on, right? So suppose uh, based on different steps which are going on, I can do the distribution and see what is happening and so on. So even distribution can be done from here, okay? Then uh, I was saying that this is the overall data, but I want to filter, suppose, on my quarter. I say I want to see only the data for Q4 2020, right? So it's as simple as just doing a filtration here and then seeing the data here. So here, if you see, it's a filtered data. From the overall data, I filtered only for Q4, and I'm getting the data for that. So everything is available to you visually. Everything is available to you as just a click uh, over here, and you can filter your data as well. So I'll just show you. I can, so there are lot of parameters here. I can, uh, I can select each of the filters here and visualize my data accordingly, okay? So let me do it all again. Okay, then I can, uh, I want to suppose, I want to understand. Uh, so I want to suppose understand that, uh, uh, suppose I want to understand, say Maverick Bank, where the approval steps are not being followed, right? So suppose I have around this many data, which is uh, not uh, following my entire process. So then I can do, go again into and do a root cause analysis. In root cause analysis, I can say, uh, I can go and say, which are the late deliveries, okay? So maybe what has happened here, I'm not uh, selecting the correct data. So let me go back here. So let me do to end to end process again. So we were seeing this and uh, yeah. So suppose I want to see, uh, okay, let's, let's see. This was the event analysis we have seen. Then uh, we have seen, uh, okay, let's, yeah. There's another option here. We'll see one by one again. So suppose I want to see based on the efficiency. So supplier performance. So this many suppliers have late delivery rate of 92%. This one, Best Run Canada supplier has a late delivery rate of 92%. So everything that I need to understand for my data, for the different parameters, I can easily understand from here. Then I, what I can do is I can, again, apply some filters as well. So suppose I want to filter based on a particular company, say company one. So that filtration I can do here. Then I can do, suppose I want to, do a comparison between the data from one company to another company, right? So that comparison, there's a filter and a comparison option available here. So one, I showed you filter, and the second is this comparison option. So in the comparison option, I say that I want to select company one, and I want to compare it with the, say, company two. So here, what it does is automatically, it gives a different color coding. This is orange, this is purple. 
and I can then visually see the data also for step wise as well. So suppose review, revoke purchase execution uh, for company one, which is in this amber uh, color, it's when any um, invoices or the any processes went through, whereas in case of company two, this many were going through and so on. Then I can revert it, invert it as well. So instead of doing the color coding this way, I can do it there. So this is like a handy feature as well. Then I can also see from the variant perspective, like, so I can do basically comparison, side by side, com side by side comparison, and I can compare it visually as well. And I can see it at our overall level, whereas I can also go at, at a detail level. And same thing which I showed here, right? Uh, this thing, a trend and all, we can see that as well. So, so you can see here, a lot of things we can see here. So let me do a clear on. And if you want to see the root level data, right? The actual data which I have fed in, right? So then I can go to the process data uh, option. So this is my like row level data, which I want to see. So this is actually the data which I fed in. So uh, I want to go at, go at a uh, root level and see what is the data I fed in. I can export it as well uh, and so on. Then we can do uh, suppose root cause analysis. So I can say I am filtering so show significant inquiries. I let me check this. Okay. So suppose I have uh, I want to see late delivery. I see that out of the, my overall data, 33% have late delivery. Okay. And out of that, if I want to say late delivery, I want to do more filtration. Late delivery, and I want to see which uh, material is late delivered. So I can do second level of filtration, and I can zoom in, and I can say okay, late delivery is yes means it's late delivery and this particular data is late delivered so overall in the overall picture maybe eight percent is for this particular item say notebook pro 17 uh, this is late then again this is another uh, item say flat panel assembly so again this data is based on what i have fed right so i can visually understand that i can do a root cause analysis and i can understand that okay this particular item within uh, for this late delivery parameter, these particular items are uh, in that late delivery as such. Okay. And then we have this question of automation potential. So this is the one. So automation potential, when you click, it will analyze the data and it will uh, it will uh, show you that uh, suppose your create purchase requisition for that entire cycle, right? Suppose your create requisition first, uh, create purchase requisition, entire data which is fed in entire data if i do it is almost taking three years right it is there's no uh, automation here so then def definitely it's a candidate for automation whereas in case of uh, create purchase order item there is no manual steps so then here it's showing zero first. so i can come here and see okay this particular step is definitely taking more time so this is a candidate for automation so automatically based on the data it kind of gives you a detail uh, you can understand that so suppose you can again then go to the details, see which activities are uh, taking more time. So suppose this this particular step is taking definitely taking more time. So that, then it is it does has the uh, automation potential. So and you can uh, see more in the details of this particular step. Then I uh, again here there are different different parameters. I was saying uh, I think we kind of covered more or less most of the things. And uh, then from the data settings, you can again just like other of the products, right? You can restrict permissions as well. If you want to restrict particular in your overall theme of things, suppose you want only finance people. I think finance people have most of the access. But suppose your HR team, you want only certain kind of access. Uh, again, HR is not a good example. But suppose your IT team suppose needs to have particular kind of access. So that all uh, you can do restrictions as well from there. So as you can see, there are a lot, lot many options here uh, to understand your data. Uh, the main thing is it gives you a visual representation. It gives you a ability to do a root cause analysis. And then uh, once you do uh, this root, root cause analysis, suppose as you see here, uh, suppose I told you one more thing. So I think, uh, yeah. So whatever uh, you do here, right? You can get that automation potential. Uh, this we did and suppose you do an event analysis and so on so what i can do is uh, 
I can directly, there's one more option here. If I come to this particular step, right? Suppose I understand that this particular step is something which in the process that I want to uh, automate, then I have an option here, right click and send this activity directly to automation. So once I click this, uh, it will ask me for certain details, the automation name and all, and directly I can submit it to automation. So again, in the presentation, we were seeing, right? That everything feeds into automation now. So directly it can be fed into, it's not mandatory, but uh, if you are using automation hub, you can feed feed this data. So it's like this products are interrelated with each other. If you want to feed data into automation hub, this is one mechanism to do it. Of course, you can directly go into automation hub and feed in data as well and so on. So that's also possible. So I'll take a pause here. I think there's not, not much information with the past. So uh, are there any questions here? So guys, we have questions. Yeah. So Vishal, uh, how do we can choose a process for the a process mining? Yeah. So first step for the process for the process mining is uh, as I was showing here, uh, you have to come here, use the app uh, and use a template. So suppose it depends. So suppose if it is uh, this ready to use template, like say purchase to pay and so on, then you can directly use them. If you have cert certain things which are, suppose you want to do, suppose this, this invoice incident management, right? You might be using Jira or you might be using this service now and so on. So some templates are inbuilt so that you can directly select. Otherwise you can also create your own templates or you can select this uh, single file, multiple files and so on. So if worst case you don't have anything matching, you can use multiple files. So it will be like system A, B, C, D. You feed in the data for A, B, C, D and then again, it will visually show you the same thing which I am showing you. Uh, before this, okay, okay, yeah. Any other question? And uh, again, the one more thing. So, how hmm. this a process mining data, right? Data it is getting. It is uh, taking the data from the logs only, right? From orchestrator logs. Yeah, not orchestrator logs. So basically, as I said, uh, your data which you feed in, right? There are multiple sources of getting uh, data. So let me show you one minute. So you'll understand. So suppose I select here, create and complete. So I will create one next. So, so see here. Suppose sample data is just if you're using for demo purpose and uh, which UiPath is directly giving so that you can directly see the what all parameters are there. Then the other option is uploading a CSV or a TSP file in a format which is required or you can use certain tools. So these are tools which are used, which uh, like data sync tools. Suppose you have an existing uh, database from where you want to sync and so on. So you can use these tools. So the, again, as I said, you can have uh, different ways in which you can get the data. You can uh, dump your data into a CSV format, import it there. You can have a data sync. You can create connectors like which is there in the template and directly get data from the system. So it is like, uh, to understand if you have connectors, what is the difference between using this kind of data versus connector? The only difference is if it is a connector, right? It is more real time. Suppose you have a connector with SAP, you get more real time data. Every time your uh, orders get added, you can immediately see the uh, difference and you can visually uh, visualize it, right? Versus if you have this dump, what will happen is you will have to again export that data, again do a refeed and then see that compare that data again, compare with the old graph, what is the difference in the new graph? Suppose I did some automation based on this process mining, right? Once I have done the automation, I want to again see that. So then I need to feed in the new data here, right? So then it is, I need to do that step again. Whereas using where you have that uh, uh, template or we have your direct connector, it is more little bit more real time because then you directly immediately get the data. Okay. Okay. One question on that. What is the difference between uh, process mining and data mining then? So we are using data to create uh, automation opportunities. Is that not the same for data as well? Data mining? Yeah. Data mining is a term where you are understanding the data. Uh, you try to understand where, what exactly my data is. So data mining is purely like you are understanding your data your data might be spanning multiple systems okay and you want to purely understand what my data is actually talking about what is so we say invoice data or so on and your data mining or data you have this concept of uh, a data lake wherein you have data coming from different different sources and so on 
process mining is as you see here it is more of from the process perspective again uh, they uh, again it is based on data so you cannot say that they are completely different but process mining you are understanding your overall if your business people or, or your management wants to understand right uh, they will not directly understand the data they will want to understand it visually graphically and as you can see in the process mining it becomes very easy to explain to them so uh, obviously process mining is also based on the data because ultimately everything is fed you whatever you're seeing in the graph is nothing but the actual data right what uh, uipath has done is it is graphically represented that data to you and given you different different parameters or different kind of filters to understand the data so uh, you can say process mining is more from the process perspective which is using data and data mining is purely data understanding the data where it has nothing to do with process your data may be any data which you want to understand and you want to use so maybe you using data mining you are feeding the data and using process mining you are understanding the data more more from the process perspective and what is the difference between the uh, task mining and process mining yeah so as i was saying uh, process mining you understand the overall process okay so i was taking this example of uh, multiple departments your entire process uh, your procure to pay pay process right uh, or your Uh, purchase to pay process right it will span multiple departments so uh, suppose you go into any company uh, they tell you that hey i don't know what needs to be automated you tell to me okay so instead of you telling them that uh, you automate your hr processes or you automate your finance processes if you want to get more in depth understanding of what exactly their processes are there you can use get the data from them from different systems push that into process mining understand where there's a potential for automation where they are spending more time because you can see right it is very easily understood that where there is an automation potential where the time is getting spent and so on so process mining will normally uh, encompass or cover lot many departments it will not be particular a single department whereas in case of task mining so task mining comes as a step two once suppose you understand it okay uh, my uh, suppose procurement de department is always taking more time to process my orders so then you might have a task mining agent deployed on that procurement department laptop it will be like uh, it is again a tool which is used and you will then understand more on what actually they are doing are they using some manual processes and so on so task mining will always be particular to a subset of a group of people it is not spanning multiple group of people it is a subset so it is a step to which you will take and you will understand more from say procurement team this is where they are spending time so the result of task mining you will be understand okay this is the place where there is an automation potential and then you'll exactly understand it okay now this is what needs to be automated so uh, in a, in a high level task mining is through a particular department or a particular step whereas process mining is encompassing your overall process end to end it is not particular to a particular department so can we say the task mining is a part of the process mining only sub part of it or sub process we can say you can say because when uh, uipath kind of uh, uh, gives a discovery tool uh, basically what happens is again it's up to the customer uipath will say that you take process mining task mining together because as a result of process mining the next step you will need to understand more on uh, the process but some some uh, customer might not want to buy that right so some customer might say that uh, i'll just take process mining but this to work more together you can say because process mining as a next step you will need to use task mining to understand more into that and then there are these are all mining tools right you now have communication mining and so on so but yeah you can say it is a subset or a next step logical step as a result of process mining you you will more or less you might use task mining but again some customer might not want to use it and so on so it is again dependent but you i path would recommend that basically okay okay Okay. Any other questions? I think we shall one question. I think why we choose with the process mining, especially because we know that everyone we have to analyze the process, right? Mm -hmm. So most of the customer they don't want for uh, process mining. We can go at uh, directly. We can go ahead with the automation point of view. So why we need a process mining? Because most of the customer they will not accept this process mining again it will becomes under new license model and again again it's cost under more cost under, right yeah it depends on your customer's maturity level right so suppose as i said process mining what happens is we see the entire process end to end right so suppose some customers will say that no no we know the process uh, end to end we want to directly go with automation we know that my 
say procurement department takes time let me start with automation so uh, with the procurement department i want to directly start that so there are different ways in which uh, your automation candidate can come into picture right so some customer might say that i directly want to go ahead with automation but what happens is in process planning is they are working in silos so we had this one point in the presentation right we are working in silo or we are working with one particular department you still don't know in the overall picture where exactly you are so you are uh, doing your automation or your judgment based on some customer's judgment right but do you have data supporting that do you have uh, you do have validation do you have historical data which is supporting that which is available here through process mining what happens is you are analyzing the entire data you can actually pinpoint it based on this data you understand that yes this is the step you can visually see it and you can see that okay you are seeing the process end to end then it's very easy to kind of understand that yes this is my process which is taking time which is this is my department which is taking time so process mining not all customers might want to do uh, but it is a very important tool when you that's why i would say that you can when you go with you talk with your customer you can show them the benefits there uh that this is how you can understand the picture or overall picture because without that you will not understand and then it is only based on the judgment of a particular department or a particular customer so here you get an overall picture so that is the main advantage here. Yep. thank you yeah also, also to add on this uh we have legacy systems also in, uh, in the process uh, now what happens is when we are having legacy systems what actually is the root cause is that the business or the users they have developed that process and they're not aware what would be the end-to-end -end process execution exactly, where the process flow is getting stacked, as Vishal has already mentioned. So that is how it has also been taken care of. So we get a proper view on understanding how the process flow, what is the actual process that has been followed and how that can be optimized further from the automation perspective. Yeah, thanks, Shubham. Okay, I think we are on time. Uh, any further questions? But yeah, I mean, we can obviously take any questions. Yeah, uh, so guys, yeah, yeah, no. yeah, Namrata. Yeah, uh, Vishal, coming back to the automation potential, right, mm -hmm. that I asked earlier on. Mm -hmm. So, when we say automation potential, you are looking at it from a process level, right? So, it can have multiple process flows. We're talking sub processes, tasks, right. sub tasks, right? right? Right. So, it is not necessary that these processes are optimized at the moment. Correct. Uh, what flows it's showing, right? Yes, yes. So, at that point in time, how is it arriving at that conclusion? that the automation potential is 90% because the number of manual steps doesn't necessarily mean it is fit for automation. Yes, right? that's true. So, that's true. Yeah. yeah, so basically in the process, if you see, uh, we had different, different steps which it goes through, right? So you mm -hmm. had uh, different uh, sub-process steps, you can see. So the overall process is say procure to pay. Within that, your okay. sub-process is like you do requisition, you do purchase order and so on. You have different, different steps. So at a high level, and then you had this option to go more into the details. So suppose purchase requisition may have sub five steps. Okay. Right. So at a high, so when you say automation potential, it will first will it will be at the level at which mm -hmm. at which you are seeing the data. Suppose you are at the high level, and mm -hmm. you say that uh, requisition at you are seeing at that, that level. So at the requisition level, if it, there are sub five steps, it is possible that two of the steps are not taking time, but three of the steps are taking long time, and then it is contributing to your overall time time duration for that particular uh, step so when you go deeper you will understand that okay these three three steps are taking more time compared to the overall five steps so that's why there is that detail level uh, you can dig deeper so it will tell you at the overall level then once you go to that step and dig deeper you will understand more further so it actually to be honest it depends on how good is your data if your data right. is not capturing that information then it is very difficult to understand so the more detail level data that is captured, the more easier it will be un to for you to understand. But what the template tells you is, is that these are the overall steps which are always required for your overall process. Then even if your data is not capturing that detail level step, it will understand it, that, okay, you will you'll be able to pinpoint that at high level, this particular step is definitely taking time. Then how much detail you can go into that is depending on your quality of data. How good is your data? All right, yeah. 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 Thank you. Okay. Anything, any more questions? Yeah, I mean, these are all good questions. Uh, yeah. Okay, Shubham, I think uh, if there are no more questions, uh, you want to? Yeah, I think uh, any more questions, uh, let's wait for one minute. Else yeah. We'll be wrapping it up.
so we shall right can you have the multiple session on the different different topics as well right like apart from the process mining okay yeah what the latest feature like the business communication i think message or something like that one yeah i'll plan for that uh, basically uh, this actually i got invite from park uh, but yeah definitely you can plan uh, what you can do is you can put in your suggestion and we can plan for for the session definitely and not only me like there are so many speakers all of us have some other deck other expertise so yeah we can plan for that yeah so basically what you can do is uh, you can write it in the chat or maybe reach out to the chapter leads from different uh, divisions and then they would be obviously taking that consideration okay yeah. so we have lots of uh, new sessions that are coming up in the mumbai chapter so if you are interested you can obviously go ahead and check your path mumbai chapter leads and over there you'll be able to see what are the upcoming chapters that are coming up. i'm just putting that in the chat so that you guys are aware about it and i think that was the great sessions yeah yes okay so yeah so what about the pune session currently i'm uh, staying in pune so mm -hmm. as per mumbai right is there any pune chapter as well or are we planning any kind of session from the pune team as well yeah we have pune chapters also so i just shared the link for pune chapters also and also the mumbai chapter leads so see uh, the community that we have most of the sessions are usually uh, virtual but we have in meetup uh, person meetups also so what i can recommend you is that you go and have attend the meetings which are actually in person so that you can actually engage with the the social gathering everything you can understand what are the other people are facing as an issue if you have any issues you can get a connect with the other speakers maybe someone who is actually aware about this issue case or maybe idea and probably he would be able to help you out in that scenario And obviously, it would be helping in your networking as well. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah, and uh, and uh, Shirish, like you can definitely go to this play page. I think I, if you're not seeing community.uipath.com, so it's not only a uh, particular city wise. You can, uh, if there is a virtual session, you can attend anywhere. And you basically you can connect to us on LinkedIn if you're not connected. I mean, there are so many chapters. And then whenever oh. this kind of sessions happen, we do post it on LinkedIn at least so that people are aware. so actually this if you want to learn there are so many options to learn so there is no no scarcity for learning so <laughs> every other yeah. day there is some or the other session going on that's right uh, so as uh, vishal is already saying that we have so many options for learning out it's not only related to which domain if you have any specific reasons on what you need to actually capture or if you are wanting to actually see what are the best practices there are multi some events that would be happening in virtual sessions where you can actually go ahead and get that sorted out i have pasted my linkedin and also vishal's linkedin so you can reach out to us on linkedin as well and i think that's all yes yes okay hmm. thanks vishal thanks shubham yeah. yeah. thanks Thank for you. the thanks yeah. great okay thanks to everyone uh, Thank i am you. stopping the recording and i hope you have a great Okay. Uh, can we get the recordings of the session